I am at the Mobile World Congress where I have already seen a bunch of cool devices, some new flagship phones, a bendable phone, a laptop which has virtually no screen. But at the heart of this year's tech conference is AI. Artificial intelligence is the big theme here. I've seen a lot of devices with AI integrated in it. But one device which is getting a lot of attention right behind me is this AI pin by Humane. So what I'm going to do is sit with its founder, Imran Chaudhary, talk about this pin, its features and company's plan for the future. So stay tuned. This is a very candid conversation with Imran. Please watch it till the very end. So all right, I have Imran with me right here and I have a lot of questions popping up in my curious head. Imran, let me just, uh, why exactly do we need this pin? We live in a world where we're completely dependent on technology, right? Just about everybody in the world has a mobile phone and that's the world's most popular computer. And what we're finding now is that, um, is they want a little bit of presence and freedom in their computer interactions. And so what AI Pin enables for you is it gives you the ability to have a lot of compute with you, but you don't actually need the manual burden of uh, using touch screens or keyboards or mice to get access to that compute. And so that's, that's one of the most, I would say, liberating things about AI Pin right now is that it allows you to maintain a level of presence, a coexistence with technology that's never really been possible before. We don't get burdened with the usage. We get to actually stay around in our environment, be closer to our friends and family, and, and just have a better understanding of the world around us as well. Uh, but let's say you, you work with Apple, and Apple is the biggest, one of the biggest tech brands out there. And apps, the whole ecosystem of apps, is such an important part of that user experience. Sure. Now, when you were designing something like this, why did it completely like ditch apps? Why, why did it ditch apps? Uh, people have issues with apps. You have to manage them, download them, and you don't even know some exist. You, yeah, know, you have course. to search for them. <laughs> it's just a, it's a lot of burden. And you have a lot of what I like to call digital fatigue in managing these things. And when you can actually build a new kind of way of interacting, not only with computers, but apps themselves, you have uh, the capability to actually be app free as well. So it means in our uh, environment on Humane and Cosmos, which is our operating system, you don't have to download any applications, you don't have to manage them, you don't even have to know that they exist. Mm -hmm. The AIs go off and figure this stuff out for you, and so you just tell it what you want in a natural language capacity, and we figure it out. You don't even have to learn commands, right? You know, things like Siri or Alexa, you ha there's only a few ways that you can say things. Here, it's a very intelligent AI-based computer that understands the intention of what you're saying and then routes it to the appropriate AI application within our ecosystem. And it's, you know, really great to not have to manage all that stuff. And how does all that processing happens within the pin? Because it's powered by Qualcomm chipset, right? So, yeah, that's right. Uh, is the processing happening natively? It's happening on cloud? What are the things that the people should know about privacy, their data which is being processed over there? In fact, we've even built in uh, privacy aspects on the device itself. So it has optical sensors, but the optical sensors have a privacy chip that really manages when they're on and when they're off. And so uh, that means that when I'm using the microphones or when I'm using the image sensors or optical sensors, uh, there's a, a light that goes on. I can show you really quickly. Oh. Right? Yeah. And that means that you know and I know when the device is in use. Okay. Very, very transparent about it. But key piece is that privacy chip means that if it's ever tampered with, either physically or digitally, the entire device will become immobilized. We need to move on from smartphones, right? But all of you have a different idea about what's next. Like somebody right here is telling us that there's a phone on which you have built-in AI, you don't need to use apps, it's an AI-powered phone. Apple is telling us, oh, this Vision Pro, the AI, yeah. big headset that you wear on your head is, is the future and that's how sure. you know interact with computers. And you are telling me that this, is, this pin is going to probably replace phones in some time. Who should I believe? You know, I think you need to believe in the people that you feel really good about. I, th I think coexistence really evolves out of being screen-free, hands-free, and app-free. Various options that, that people have, 
don't really hit all those marks. And I think when you look at our coexistence today, whether it's something you hold in your hand, it's not that much different than what you've been having for the last 15 years. And when you put something on your face, it, like the thing you're holding in your hand, puts a barrier between you and everybody, everyone around you. What we're really keen on offering is ambient compute. The ability to actually really be placed and have a full awareness of what's going on around you, but not let go of your passion or your need for compute. Having it be here all the time means that the moment I think about something, or the moment sometimes when something's necessary for me to do, it's right here, without a barrier and without any kind of impedance. This is coming next month. That's the initial plan you had. Are you uh, on track to meet that timeline? Yeah, we're absolutely on track. And so uh, the devices leave the factory. They start to ship out the factory in March, as promised. And then they start to really uh, meet uh, the, the distribution centers and they end up in customers' hands like sometime in April, in the beginning okay. of April. So we're going to the end of March, uh, they'll leave sometime around, I think, the last week. What sort uh, of volumes are you predicting? You know, we have been really impressed by the demand. Uh, certainly, uh, the global demand is really massive. India it represents our largest market in terms of inbound. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to really get into India um, and, and make sure that we are culturally appropriate in terms of the types of things that uh, Indian customers want out of their services. So we're going to be spending um, time in India trying to really do a bit of research and understanding the best way to impact uh, the Indian customer. It is our goal to be in India at some point. We're just trying to figure out the right partners and the right timing. Okay, so one last question. So how important do you think with all these AI devices it is to be you know, uh, culturally more aware and sensitive, and how do you train these devices to do that? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a great question. It's a very challenging piece when you start to implicate compute in things like knowledge and memory and things like that. When things can become inherently personal, it's important for you to be culturally aware. So for us, what's, what's important is that uh, we understand some of the vernacular that's really important. You know, we have a voice-based uh, operating system um, and it has responses that colloquially have to make sense. And so there's models that we would be training to understand that. Uh, we have uh, different types of services that we'd want to make sure that they're appropriately doing the right thing in those areas. It's very important when as compute becomes inherently more and more personal that it takes these things into account. And uh, there's some challenges for a lot of companies. Every company has uh, different challenges. Yes, uh, for us, you know, I think we, we're trying to be as, as personal as we can. So yes, that was Imran with the, I think it answers a lot of my questions, it answers a lot of your questions and hopefully as he promises or he says, not other promise that we will get to see the spin in India as well at some point. At some point. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate it.